In this video, we're going to be talking about Pier Paolo Pasolini's 1968 film Tio Rema, or Coffee with Aliens at the Movies, a film education and review channel. I'm Robert Bellissimo. I'm an actor and acting teacher. I'm Stephen Chambers. I'm an actor and a writer. And if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button in the description box below. Okay, Steve. So yeah. I've seen this once before many years ago and I watched it again. What's the, what's the gist of the plot? All here? right, well, uh, it's uh, about a guy that shows up, has sex with a family and leaves and they all come to pieces. I, I think it's a little open-ended as to whose life falls to pieces and, who, and whose doesn't. Yeah. Within the within the four family members, and it's 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 and it's um, it's not very clear. It's kind of up to the audience, but yeah, that's basically the gist of the. I agree. That's that's the gist of the plot. And it's, uh, do you do you think people can see themselves in this movie? Is there a hook that is universal about it? Absolutely, actually, because oh, for sure. because all it's saying is taking almost these archetypical characters, like the family. I mean, right. You've got seemingly, like, you look at the father as just a big businessman who's concerned. It's money, 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 bourgeois lifestyle, all of them. The kind of button-down, repressed son and mother. And then the maid, I don't even know what, what's going on with her, but she becomes uh, she becomes Jesus by the end. Yeah, so I can't, Yeah, so I can't relate to the Jesus thing. Well, I can but most people can't <laughs> denying your desires i think living yeah. a lie i think that's a huge thing pretending you're yeah. something you're not Stamp's character arrive arrives he brings all these characters back to themselves or puts them in touch with desires and emotions that they weren't in touch with and that to me can be both scary but also beautiful at the mm. same time and i think with these characters it's it's either that they're going to embrace it or, or they're not going to, and, and, and it's, it's up to the audience whether that's optimistic or not within each character, I think. The, the, there's a moment with the mother when she's going around and, and becomes like the cruiser, and that's like Pasolini, right? And I think she's the most Pasolini-like character because sure. he has her with the Catholic guilt mixed in with the having, you know, and she's pained by the sex. She doesn't seem to be, she seems yeah. to... You don't really know whether she's enjoying she has that moment in the car where she just lets out this gas yeah. and i thought it really actually hit me and then of course she goes into the church and that's pasolini right because he's he's not yeah. orthodox in a marxist sense in a homosexual sense well, and that's the sense. contradiction that's him right yeah that's, that's, and that's simon incredible. touched on that absolutely well in, in our yeah. live talk and i kind of like that i thought it was interesting that as soon as she drops him off she looks at the statues and she goes into the church. So it's like, she's confessing her sins. And I thought, mm, that, you know, obviously she is someone who's maybe been with one man and she, then she was in, it's that sexual awakening. Of course, this is the late sixties, right? Sexual revolution. Yeah. It was really hitting on that political time. I don't know. It just, it's because I intellectually understood it. That doesn't make it a movie experience for me. Oh, totally, yeah, and, I, and it's not meant to be. It, it's an essay on film, right? Right, well, and there's my point. Then you, why, why make it a movie? You have your traditional movie, or not even, but uh, a, a movie that, by my definition, I feel I'm invested in. Or you have the thought-provoking film where I sit back and then and I don't really... Uh, this is obvious. This is obvious. Like you said, everything it's talking about, it's fucking telling you. Yeah. It's just it. It's telling me. It's not showing me. And what I, I mean by that is, what do you mean it's not showing you? There's no dialogue. It's all imagery. I'm like, yeah, but it's just stilted. It's a series of photographs with an essay beside it. And I, I didn't feel it move. So speaking of structure, it didn't flow. Nothing moved into one thing to the next for me. It was jarring and ridiculous. I don't necessarily think that everything is so, is so clear. Like, I think, you know, even uh, for, there's lots of scenes where, you know, I even w I watched a film scholar on the Criterion channel mm. say, you know, there's no way of knowing why the woman, the young girl goes out with the, and she's measuring the the backyard, like why she was doing that or why he 
why he had her be the least hopeful character. The fact that she becomes canatonic is that a misogynist thing? Like, oh, well, these young women don't have enough options. Is he saying something about society? And even like, why does the, the maid become a miracle worker? Uh, and then she buries herself under this construction site. Like, is that a, a thing like, like that she is this miracle worker? So hopefully those miracles will grow like a tree out into the world. And it's sort of like, we're gonna go right under this fucking cat uh, where they're doing this construction site and build these stupid houses for the bourgeois. And I'm gonna be right, I'm, I'm the, you know, you see the tears, the puddle, I'm crying underneath. You know, it's it's obviously not obvious. Like when I was watching that, and even as the miracle worker, I'm like, what, what, what is that? Like, I think some of the things are obvious. Like, I think with the mother and the the father, definitely in the sense of like, ooh, getting in touch with homosexual feelings. I think that was very clear. And even with the son, he's then struggling to find truth and become an artist and like pissing on his canvas. You know, that's a very Andy Warhol thing in the '60s from you know, then what the pop art was becoming alive. And, you know, those were his most popular paintings, pissing on canvases and stuff, right? So, so it's some things I think are pretty obvious and some things you're like, what? Like, you have to, there's no answer. I looked up what Roger Ebert's, and I, you know, I give him credit because I, I think this, this showed a real lack of ego because uh, I think credits, uh, critics like to show that they can just watch something and analyze it on the spot right. and know everything. And he literally wrote, I don't know what to say about this. I don't, he said, I don't know whether I like it or not. I don't know whether I should wait two months before reviewing yes. it. I just watched it. So maybe I too need two months to really consider it. If, if anything says anything about this, it moved well. So yeah, I'll give it yeah. that. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. We go back to the film critic scholar that I love, Ray Carney, and yeah. and he said, you know, most films are uh, obviously this is to the hundred percent degree, but most films are, you know, uh, used uh, with allegories and are simple to understand. Maybe sometimes you have to look a little closer. You know, obviously you could do whatever you want with the movie. Uh, if it's shot on a, uh, with a camera and you cut it together, it's a movie, whether it's a total allegory or it's a, an action thriller or whatever. It's, it's, uh, it's just, it, there, it, it, there's a story. And obviously he told this story. And again, for anyone who doesn't know, you know, he was a poet. He was a, a he was very, very intellectual man. You, you can definitely see it in his, in his work after his neorealist uh, period with Akatone and Mama Roma. And he, he really went full hill, hill, especially from his later work, Tio Rama up until Salo. Not something you're gonna be entertained by. It's not something you're gonna necessarily even like. Uh, but you, you, I mean, I've never forgotten it. Like I, You just said, um, you said like, you don't, you don't even have to like it, but you won't forget it in, in yeah. terms of this movie. I think that's, that's a terrible thing to say. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like breaking my arm, but I'm not gonna fucking forget it. Does that mean, I, I, what the fuck does that mean? To elaborate on that, uh, you know, because I think most of us go into a film to, to hopefully be and somewhat entertained. And what I mean is I think if you read Pasolini's essay on this, or even the book, I mean, this is based on his book, Tio Rema, you, you, because I think when people read something, they're not reading to be entertained, they're reading to learn. Two things. So speaking of uh, metaphors and using this as an analogy, I think it does hit a lot of the same themes as um, Le Clisse, which we talked about last week or the week before. Uh, I really do. I think it's it's you know shitting on money and uh, yeah, yeah we're losing and of course human... at the beginning like he gives the fact the guy gives the mm. the, the, the the factory factor, the factory to the factory, workers and that's very the influence from the angel hundred percent hundred percent yeah I think he saw film as another outlet to get his his theories out there and sure. I think it was just a natural evo evolution. I agree. Uh, I to agree. him, I mean, yeah. he and he wrote and he wrote he wrote poetries and essays about film as poetry, 
and it's an opportunity to reach people with what he's saying, uh, probably more so than a book. I mean, Pasolini is, he's not some, like when, when you talk about Italian movies of the past, you know, Argento comes up, yeah. uh, De Sica, Rossellini, Visconti, uh, those, are the, those are the people that come up mainly. And uh, for me anyways, obviously Pasolini is someone, all his movies are on Criterion, you know, uh, he's talked about, but he's not, he's always in the, in the, he's somewhere in the top 10, but never in the top five usually. Yeah, but yeah, I think right. young, I think younger, I think younger people would, would really dig him because I of agree. his boldness, you know, and I think, you know, young people are just ones to really take risks, really take chances to, to die for causes, to not, to live in the moment. And I think that points to Pasolini because I think here we, again, as we said, here we are, 1968, he makes films where the themes are largely about sexual revolution, about homosexuality, before it, that was in a film, before Stonewall Uprising. And I think people will say, good on you that you were just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to make a movie and you know again he was he was gay right i'm gonna i'm gonna make a movie where that is a major issue where we're gonna see a father and son have sex with the same guy and then cruise at the end we're gonna end it on male cruising and in a big train station tons of people are around i don't no one knows what's really going on here i think i think younger people if you don't know pasolini i think you'd appreciate him on that alone and even the fact that he wanted to go away from neorealism and even his neorealist films as we said with simon are 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 even tougher they lack the sentimentality of like a bicycle thieves and they're just they're they're almost scarier in that sense they almost bring you into the reality even more so i even would, though i probably I, I would agree Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, if you haven't seen Theorama, you can see it on the Criterion channel and our friends at Unobstructed View here in Toronto. Obviously, they also have it on Criterion on the DVD and Blu-ray. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking on our Coffee with Aliens at the Movies logo at the top right of our screen, and that will give you an instant subscription. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.